Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to our Easter Sunday morning worship service. As we begin, we acknowledge that here in Saskatoon, we are on Treaty 6 territory, the traditional homeland of numerous First Nations, including Cree, Dene, Nakota, Soto, and Ojibwe, as well as the Métis Nation. We acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the peoples with whom the treaties were signed, the territories on which we reside, and our responsibility as treaty people. We also honor the heritage and gifts of the Métis people. May we live with respect on this land and live in peace, reconciliation, and friendship. We gather our hearts together and come into the presence of God in worship. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Oh, 
Pray together. Love divine, in raising Christ to new life, you open the path of salvation to all. Send us out with the joy of Mary Magdalene to proclaim that we have seen the Lord, so that all the world may celebrate with you the banquet of your peace. Amen. Introduction to the First Reading Peter crosses the immense religious and social boundary that separates Jews from Gentiles in order to proclaim the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, so that God's forgiveness in Jesus' name would reach out to all people. A reading from Acts, and does what is right, is acceptable to God. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that Jesus did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put Jesus to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with Jesus after he rose from the dead. Jesus commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about Jesus, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of righteousness. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. 
Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We pray together. Holy and mighty God, your son's triumph over sin and death has opened to us the gate of eternal life. Purify our hearts that we may follow where Christ has gone and share in the radiance of Christ's glory. We as this for the sake of our risen Lord. Amen. Introduction to the second reading. The core of the Christian faith and Paul's preaching is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As the crucified and risen Christ appeared to the earliest followers, so we experience the presence of the risen one in the preaching of this faith. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now, I would remind you, brothers and sisters and siblings, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn receive, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, Christ appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not me, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. God be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you. Lord Jesus Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. 
but go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you this day. From God, our loving parent, Jesus, the risen one, and the spirit of life and truth. Amen. Today is a day we desperately need. A day of celebration filled with reminders of a promise fulfilled, a day to live life forwards. Danish theologian and philosopher Soren Kierkegaard wrote, life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. When it feels like hope is lost, when doubts creep in, when anxious moments linger, when it feels like we are the ones sitting in a tomb, it is hard to know that there is a forwards. We are ready, O oh God, and eager for reassurance, for hope, for Jesus to come out of the dark tomb, to bring us out of the ones of our own making. Beloved of God, Today is the day that the tomb is empty, a day for living forwards. So it's interesting that in our gospel from Mark, what we first encounter is the shock and trauma of the women who go to Jesus' tomb. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome are filled with terror and amazement. They are afraid. They flee and tell no one. The first witnesses to the empty tomb respond in a different way than we anticipate, and one that differs from the other gospel accounts. In John, Mary goes to the tomb alone, and then after fetching the other disciples, she's left alone again weeping outside the tomb. In Luke, the women go together and they tell all the disciples what they have seen, but they are not believed. In Matthew's account, the women leave hurriedly to tell the other disciples. We are told they are afraid, but joyful. But in Mark, the women respond with an unconscious trauma response which we know to be fight, flight, fawn, or freeze. They are somewhat frozen, then they flee. They flee in terror because in this moment, there's no discernible hope, not, not yet. In this moment, there's only shock. In this moment, there is only an empty tomb and they do not yet know what it is to be raised. We understand the response of Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, who go to the tomb with one expectation, yet find a completely other truth, one they cannot yet process. Yet even in that holy moment, there is no denying that the tomb is now empty. They leave the tomb just as Jesus did, surrounded in the darkness of the cavern, stepping out into the light. In the opening of that tomb to the outer world, we have the truth of our gospel text today, that we are not left with only trauma, for Jesus has been raised and is not here. The young man dressed in white explains that Jesus' body has not been taken away somewhere. He's been raised. 
In Jesus rising, we are empowered to acknowledge our traumas, what it is that entombs us, so that Jesus can raise us to new life by the same transformational grace that raised Jesus from the dead. Where the world is groaning in trauma and pain, heartbreak, and from the ashes of war and conflict, Jesus rises. From a tomb of death and despair, from the rubble and ash, from a cross of humiliation, Jesus rises. And we too hear the good news proclaimed from the hidden face of the one who spoke to the women in the tomb, hope lives. Jesus lives and new possibilities emerge from places that represent the epitome of hopelessness. Possibilities burst forth from those times when we feel like we are the ones who are buried, lying in utter despair. Divine love proclaims new life to us. Rise, beloved of God, you are mine. From the waters of your baptism, rise to new life and new hope. I am holding you close, and when hopelessness or despair, or when it seems like there is no way out of the tomb in which you find yourself, divine love says, I will find a way. And God finds a way. And we rise to live life forwards. Thanks be to God. As I close this message, I want to share a poem by Jan Richardson called Risen. If you are looking for a blessing, do not linger here. Here is only emptiness, a hollow, a husk where a blessing used to be. This blessing was not content in its confinement. It could not abide in its isolation, the unrelenting silence, the pressing stench of death. So if it is a blessing you seek, open your own mouth. Fill your lungs with the air this new morning brings and then release it with a cry. Hear how the blessing breaks forth in your own voice, how your own lips form every word you never dreamed to say. See how the blessing circles back again, wanting you to repeat it, but louder. How it draws you, pulls you, sends you to proclaim its only word, risen. Risen, risen. May we look out from the empty tomb toward a new beginning, to new life in Christ, and rise. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. We raise our alleluias and praise to you, O oh God, for your saving grace through Jesus Christ. May our trauma, terror, amazement, and tears of sorrow give way to joy. In Jesus rising, raise us to new life and resurrection promise. May our lives live forwards, spirit of life so that all we are and all we say and do might reflect our hope, which is in Christ Jesus, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We affirm our faith for Easter by saying, we believe in God who has created and is creating who works in the hidden stillness of every dawn, 
who beckons us to visit the tomb of our fears so that we might discover the birth of hope. We believe in Jesus, the risen Christ, who has come to reconcile and make new, who meets us on every path, who greets us with respect, names and calms our fears, and bids us to walk and talk as children of the light. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who works through the wrinkled and the newborn, the hurting and the hopeful, who nudges our prayers, who kindles our longings and prompts our praise. We believe that we are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect for creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our savior and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. God is always with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. And we ask your help as we seek ways to support the care of our environment, to maintain and create healthy ecosystems, that the creation be a place where the natural world create creatures, wildlife and habitants continue to support life now and for generations to come. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations. Free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. We name before you Haiti, Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, and Russia, among countries and peoples in need of peace and stability. We pray, God of grace, hear our prayer. Liberating God, you, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. We pray for those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. The Ansaldo family, Chris Atkins, Catherine Ash, Marion Garsning, Mike Glacier, Doreen Holland, Brian Hartsook, Mary Hattam, Kate McCaddy, Anna Corn Betty Mattis, Mary Mackay, C. Smallner, John Moore, Kathy and Gay Mudre, Ward Mudre, Linda Popkin, Donna Sanders, Tammy Shoemaker, Anthony Torgan, Edna Vibert, and Karen Wright. And any that you may wish to pray for. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
Eternal God, renew our trust in your promises, that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all those for whom we have prayed, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And now the God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Hallelujah. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God.